Welcome to Theology in 3, Pastor Michael Fueling with you, and today we're going to be talking about deacons. In the New Testament, there are two church offices or positions of leadership. Uh, the first is what we call elders. We did a separate Theology in 3 on that. Go check that out to go deeper there. The second office is that of deacons. Um, the word deacon comes from the Greek word diakonos, which means servant or to serve. And what we find in terms of church leadership in the New Testament is that the elders have the primary responsibility for leadership, caring, shepherding, protection of a local church. What we find, though, is that the needs of a local church can become really overwhelming for a group of elders. So what we find is in the book of Acts, chapter 6, God, in his mercy and grace to the elders and to the apostles, established what we now call the office of deacons. Their job is to come alongside of the elders and to take some of the shepherding, benevolent, and care burdens off of them so that the elders can do the things that God has called elders to do. I want to read this passage to you. It's from Acts, chapter 6. And and here's what it says in verse three. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. And the duty here was actually caring for some of the conflict in the with some of the women of the of the church. And so the elders were getting distracted. They weren't able to do their primary ministry. And so they say, we need to, we need to, we need help here. So pick out seven men full of the wisdom, full of the spirit, full of wisdom. And what, what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. And what we find here is that their primary reason, as they go on in Acts 6, is we need to focus on prayer and the ministry of the word. And we're getting bogged down by all of these needs. We need help. And so the office of deacon was established in Acts chapter 6 to come alongside, to serve, and to support not just the church, but the elders of the church. Now, there are specific qualifications for becoming a deacon, and they're found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 through 13. It says this, deacons, likewise, they must be dignified. Not double tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Let them also be tested first, then let them serve as deacons, if they prove themselves blameless. And then it talks about their wives, and there are requirements if you're a deacon that's married. Their wives, likewise, must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So if you're in a local church context, love, encourage, and pray for your deacons. 